thanks for taking the time to chat today. Um, I understand you're in Las Vegas at the Adult Entertainment Expo. Uh, how's the show going? So far it's going really well. They're seeing great attendance numbers and it's our first time having a booth here for Arrangement Finders and it's been a great success. All right, cool. Well, let's just get to some background first before, uh, in case anybody who's checking out this interview isn't familiar with you. Uh, now, you were born and raised in California and I believe you started exotic dancing in 2003 and you started making adult films in 2006 and have appeared in uh, more than 120. Is all that correct? It's mostly correct. Um, the, the, the film count is rough because they do, uh, they, they repackage the same scenes again and again. Right, but right. It's about, it's about right. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, but you're, you're something of a veteran in the business, I guess we could say. Uh, wh what's your status now? Are you uh, retired or quasi-retired or? You know, it's funny. Everyone's asking that question. Um, I, I do particular projects, passion projects with my fiance. Um, so I'm not available for hire to anyone. I don't work with other men, but here and there I'll do something. Right, right. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'll ask you a little bit more about the, the industry in a minute, uh, but first we have some news to discuss. Um, so what can you tell me about this new venture of yours? Today we announced that I'm coming on with Arrangement Finders as their president. I've made an investment and we're going to be expanding the company and getting as much growth as we can. We're starting a $10 million TV campaign and we're just going to blast out of the gates. Right, okay. That's interesting. Now this, this is a company, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the website, it's based in Toronto, right? The parent company is based in Toronto. Right, and that's Avid Life Media, right? Yes. Okay, so how, uh, just logistically speaking, how are you going to be working this? The company it services Canada and North America and pretty much anywhere in the world. Most of the, the members are Canadian or North American. Uh, the biggest cities are Seattle, San Francisco, New York, places where a lot of uh, people in tech live. L.A. is a great city. Um, I, I don't need to be in Toronto or really anywhere particular in order to, to work with arrangement finders. Right, okay. Um, so now this is obviously not just a, they came out and hired you, you're actually investing in the, in the business. So can you tell me a bit, a bit about how this came to be? Did you approach them? Did they approach you? It was sort of a, an organic thing. I, I'd known one of the owners for a very long time and through a course of conversation we, we came up with the idea of doing a viral video, which I did back in September. It did very well. It got a, a great amount of attention and we talked about doing more together and as those conversations went forward, it just became a larger and larger thing until eventually we decided to partner up. Right, okay. Now, arrangementfinders.com, it's not your typical dating site. Uh, I guess it's something called a sugar dating site, which I have to admit I was not familiar with myself. I had to do some reading about that. Can you explain what sugar dating is? Sugar dating is basically honest dating, if you will. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a place where people can come and meet who are looking for something other than the, the most direct path to marriage. It's, it's for those young, ambitious, gorgeous women who are looking to meet someone who's more established, who can mentor them and guide them and take them to fancy dinners and to vacation and buy them nice shoes and all of the things that women want when they're young and hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, on the one hand, uh, this whole idea of kind of sugar daddies has been around for, for quite some time, so it's kind of perfectly logical that the whole, that this stuff would start to go online. Uh, but at the same time, there's also, I'm sure you've heard this criticism that this is a sort of one step removed from uh, prostitution, or not even one step removed. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that, that criticism? I, I think when it comes to any sort of relationship between men and women that is romantic, that is not a direct path to marriage, you tend to run into that criticism first. We are actually trying to pull over people from the traditional Match.com and those sorts of sites because people aren't looking for marriage anymore. Uh, you see sites or apps like Tinder going crazy right now because people want more casual relationships. So going into something like this where you're just honest about what you're looking for up front and maintaining a relationship with someone over a course of time is, is nothing like prostitution. That's transactional. Mm -hmm. No, I guess, uh, but I guess a lot of people would consider it somewhat controversial, or it's a controversial idea. I guess that's not something you've kind of been dealing with that for for more than a decade, right? Yeah, this is this is pain for me. <laughs> um, what's the idea of making you? Because obviously you're uh, you're an investor in the site, you're the president of it, uh, and you're going to be the public face of it. So, what is the idea behind making you uh, the face of it? Is that is that what it seems to be on the surface, which is an effort to basically attract men to using the site? Uh, it, 
I wasn't made the face of it just to attract men to the site. It's more that I have a unique knowledge base and, uh, and a unique experience from nearly a decade in adult. And, and I can basically, I can speak for the woman who's looking to join those sorts of sites. And I know the type of man who's looking to join that type of site. And it's just a very natural thing for me to, to bring what I have to team up with the, with what the people at Arrangement Finders already have and grow it. Mm. It's good you mentioned that because I was going to ask you what um, what sort of men and and women I guess would you say are are looking to use a site like this. The largest growing demographic for the men joining up are between twenty nine and thirty five. Uh, you have a, a huge amount from the tech sector, and they're men who basically they've been very successful. They've hit their stride in their career. Um, they probably haven't had a ton of dating experience, but they're ready now to go out and start trying that. And they have the time and they have the resources to really have a lot of fun. They're looking for women who are like-minded, who want to also go out and go to the nice dinners, go on the yachts, do, do the stuff that you didn't really have access to when you were younger, when you were sweating your way through college or climbing up the ladder and at the corporation you're working at. They're finally able, they have the freedom to go out and enjoy life now. But what do you think the, uh, how would you think the females, uh, female users of the site are going to, uh, how do you think they're going to take or interpret your involvement with it? I think the female users of the site are already of the sort who are open-minded. Um, they're ambitious, they're young, they're attractive, they know what they want. And I think that they can see that I went after the same exact things. I took a different route, I went through adult, but I got the same things out of it. Okay, so uh, again, going back to what we were saying earlier about your kind of somewhat, somewhat retirement, um, I guess a lot of actresses these days are, are uh, going off into different ventures. So, wondering why, what what attracted you to this particular venture? Because you you, you obviously probably had uh, and still do have a number of opportunities, um, you know, outside of the adult um, industry. So, what drove you to this, or what attracted you to it? I see a huge future in this sort of relationship. In the in the time I've been an adult, I've seen a growing number of those sorts of relationships, not just with fellow adult actresses, but just women my age, um, to the to the point that is actually commonplace where you're in the hair salon and some woman's talking about some guy she's dating and she calls him her sugar daddy and it's just sort of an accepted, almost accessory word at this point. Um, and I think as relationships become more and more casual, you know, it, it went from you meet in a bar and then it became you meet on Match.com, but in both of those circumstances, the underlying expectation was that you're only really interacting to find out whether you're eventually going to end up together forever. And now people don't go in with that expectation. They're able to speak honestly about how they're looking for something for now. And there's no hurt feelings in that. And I think part of that is a just an extension of women becoming more and more and more capable of earning the same money, getting to the same level of success that men have gotten to. They don't need a man. Um, and you, you don't need marriage forever to be successful. You don't have to be the family man to be successful in sales. You don't have to have that image anymore. So without those pressures, you can just go out and do what works for you right now. Sugar dating is going to work for a lot of people right now, and that's only going to grow. Okay, and there's uh, just a quick Google search of um, uh, sugar dating. Uh, you type that in, you get a whole bunch of um, uh, hits there. There's, I guess, a lot of these websites. Um, in the traditional dating world, I guess there's also lots of websites too, but they kind of have um, uh, consolidated into a few big names and then maybe a couple stragglers on the outside. Um, what stage are we in with this particular kind of dating? It, it's, it seems like we're still in the early days of it, and there aren't really are there are there a few big names and a, and a bunch of smaller ones, or where are we at in this, the whole uh, evolution? In the sugar dating space, there, there are bigger names and smaller names. Um, we're not trying to compete with fellow sugar dating sites. We're going after the, the younger, hot women on Match.com because they're not looking for marriage. And maybe they go to Match.com because that's what they know to go to. But there is a site now for people who are honest from the get-go about what they want right now. And we want to go after those, those women and those men who are essentially misplaced online because that's just the go-to for them. And that's what they assume is the place... To, to find men or women on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, out of curiosity, do you have any plans for a sugar mama website? <laughs> Personally, I don't. I don't. <laughs> In the future. I don't even know if that's possible. But um, all right. Um, I'm gonna ask you some general questions about the adult industry. Um, you you probably don't remember this, but we actually spoke way back in 2009. Uh, I was working on a book um, that touched on the adult industry. 
And it was actually at the Adult Expo that we talked. Um, and at the time, I know many people in the industry were really worried about pri uh, piracy, uh, file sharing, and the YouTube sites, uh, like sites, uh, where you know they're posting all that content for free. Um, the piracy is still out there, and probably maybe more of it than before. Um, so how in how in your experience has the business changed uh, in uh, not I guess in the last five years? Piracy has very significantly eroded the the profit margin on adult to the point that budgets have come down, rates have come down, um, girls' careers and their ability to have any real longevity has come down as just sort of a, a factor of that. It's um, on the one hand, it has gutted the industry. On the other hand, it's completely forced women to take control of their own careers and find a lot of different avenues to, to bring money in. It's not just that you get paid as an actress anymore and that's your livelihood. It's you make a name for yourself as an actress and your money comes in the form of toy deals, of appearances, of uh, there, there are girls who are paid to write, who are paid to do mainstream acting. Um, I mean, basically anything where you can drive traffic and people want to pay for your traffic, you're going to monetize that. Uh, it's on the one hand, it, it's weeded out a lot of people, a lot of companies, and especially a lot of girls. But on the other, the girls who are successful now really come out with a very strong arsenal of skills because of what they've learned and, and had to sort of adapt to in the adult industry. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And now, aside from the individuals, though, what are the um, the producers, the companies doing? Um, obviously, there's you know, takedown notices and threats of lawsuits against people who are pirating and all that stuff. But what's the industry doing as a whole um, to make sure that it has a future? How um, you know, the, the part of my book was talking about how the adult industry has innovated. So, what are they doing in that space? There is a lot of um, thumb in the dike uh, with the piracy thing. We send out the takedown notices. We try to stay on top. Of, um, the, the the problem is once a once a file gets to a torrent site, you're just done. You can't you can't really get it away from a torrent site. But um, but there is there, there's takedown notices. You you start making deals. Um, one of the ways you you can see some sites that have really stood out by making a very unique sort of content and being extremely vigilant about piracy. There's one site in particular that's just had crazy success with that. It's the only one I'm familiar with, but it's new and it's working. Um, Which site is that? that? Means it's blacked.com. Um, they launched this year and they have been very, very, very vigilant to the point that they track their members and they can find out who is taking files off the site and posting them just by member activity. And, uh, and if you look, you can't find their content. Unfortunately, now you see six other sites are popping up with the same style of content, which always happens. But uh, no one's reproducing it perfectly. And, and that's going to be one way. So it's, it's a matter of very high quality content in a style that stands out. Um, so essentially creating a niche that is artistic. Um, I'm trying to do one thing that I think is going to be really, really successful uh, via product placement. I think that's an avenue that's never really been explored. And when you have, for example, I have a scene that's up that has 35 million views. Anyone can watch it, and many, many have. If someone had put in some sort of product that's branded right there, 35 million people just saw it. And I know people don't want to be tied to porn, but porn drives traffic. I think it's um, is it. I think it's more than fifty percent of searches on Google end up with adult sites. That's that's where people go. And to completely discount how powerful that is is sort of just sh you're shooting yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm going to try to do my best to spearhead the, the idea of product placement in porn. I, I can't see how it would fail for the companies who are willing to take the risk. That's interesting. What, um, so you, you mentioned that uh, some of it, it's happened. Some brands, uh, I guess, have tried this. What sort of products are we talking about? Is this like, um, would they be like you know adult products or would they be like Coca-Cola or Nike? Or? Yeah, um, easiest to begin with. It, it's, going to be, it's going to be an upward battle. Um, the easiest are the lingerie companies, the toy companies, the, the companies that already are considered adult, the ones already at, for example, an avian show because they have no problem with porn. Um, but then you want to get into, like, it would be amazing. Why, why can cigarettes not advertise with porn? There's nothing banning that. And they are a huge, huge company that, that really can't find a lot of places to advertise. Why would they not come to porn? That, that's one example. I mean, there, there are plenty of places you can go. Do I see Coca-Cola advertising with, <laughs> with uh, ManuelFerrara.com anytime soon? No. But... You know, everything starts somewhere. 